what's happening guys? Welcome to Breen. Um, Breen Sands in Somerset. With tea again. We've literally just driven up here straight from Chesil. Um, so if you haven't watched the Chesil video guys, shoot back and watch that. Um, so we, we left last night at about 11 o'clock. It wasn't actually, it was about past 10, wasn't it? Yeah. 20 to 11. Um, we fished Chesil all night. I'm absolutely knackered. It is now, what's time now? It's 10 past one in the afternoon. And we're going to fish here today. We've got a couple of hours before we start fishing, so we're going to find some food in a minute. But I've, I, I say I've never been here. I did come here years and years ago when I was a kid with my with my with my mate and his sister. We come on a caravan all day. Um, but I can't remember it to be fair. And back then I didn't know a lot. Well, I don't know a lot now, but I didn't know nothing then. Um, so yeah, all I know is it's a long trek. So also. It was good to meet uh, Chris Clark today when we was uh, packing up from uh, Chesil. Now, Chris Clark's got a YouTube channel. You should definitely check it out. He fishes Chesil a lot and fishes here a lot, and he always does well. Um, I don't know whether he just puts up his good videos and he don't put up the bad videos, but he always catches a few fish, um, and he knows his stuff, and it just so happened that he was there today. It was perfect timing. So uh, it was a right touch speaking to him, and he told us, give us a few pointers and things. So, um, yeah, I'm going to listen to it. Um, we're just going out here to have a little recce. Because you said about these, these lumps and bumps, you can see here, the, uh, your lead and that gets stuck in them and buried in them and you end up losing a bit of gear and, and uh, stuff. So, yeah, I, to be honest, I might even use rotten bottoms. And if I lose a bit of gear, it's better than losing a fish. Whoa, it's getting a bit more stodgy now. We've come out in bloody trainers because we just literally walked from the car. Um, we're just waiting for Wayne and Joe. Um, because they're coming up tonight and I think they're bringing Wayne's brother, in-law, Stefan and maybe their bait man, Ed, I can't remember either way, there's going to be a few of us tonight again, my target will be Cod I think Wayne's is going to be Cod and he wants to form back Ray which they get here quite a lot of so um, it'll be ideal for him and um, there's also a chance of a bass there's also a chance of soul so yeah, we're going to Hopefully it'll be a bit of a mixed bag tonight and we can see a few fish. Um, I, as I said though guys, I'm absolutely hanging at the minute and I'm already not looking forward to driving home tonight. But I'm getting wet feet now. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll see a few fish because chisel was pants. Really pants. Well, we went cod fishing and ended up mackerel fishing. That's how good it was. So... <laughs> But no, it, it, we made a video anyway. I'll put it up anyway. Because there was a few bits there people might not know of. So, yes. Anyway, I'm going to go stop jabbering on and uh, have a little look around here. And we will see you with some gear in a bit. Ta da! And just like magic, we've appeared in the upper channel M47 Bridge. Old Seven Bridge, the Blind Angler, an Essex Forger and Fishing Joe, T, the helmet. Um, right, so we've had a move. Where we was going to fish there, I thought we could fish from low water up. Turns out you can't. You have to fish it from about three hours up. Well, if that was the case, we was all there about four hours early and there was no way we was going to sit around. So we've driven up and down the Bristol Channel, this side, trying to find a spot. I spoke to a mate of mine, Matt, an absolute legend, told us about this place. Somewhere you can fish at low water. We're quite away from the shore, as you can see. But this is what we're, what we're on. It's absolutely solid, solid gravel. Um, so you can walk all the way out and you can walk all the way back. So I love it. This is now going to be my new spot on the, on the Bristol Channel. Let me just show you the colour of this water. Um, I know a lot of you have obviously fished the Bristol Channel, but people say, oh, it's filthy dirty. And for those people that don't know, so I'm just going to walk into the water here. So this is the colour of the water here. And I mean, the visibility is zero. Let me just cover my toes on my wellies, bearing in mind they're black, and you can't see nothing through this water. And it is like this all year round. Where it, it, there's no, if we get a nice calm day, it clears out, it just doesn't. It is this colour, 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, but I have been told you don't get things like dogfish and white in this far up river. So to be honest, the only thing we're really expecting to see up here is a codlin, a conga, or maybe a bass. 
let's have it right bass go everywhere didn't they they're going to the fresh water as well um so yeah that's the plan i'm only fishing with one rod at the minute because it, like we set up probably where that water's probably where the water is now away from the tripod when we first got here and by the time i put my reel on my rod didn't even pull the line through i was having to run backwards with it because it is flying in flying in um behind us we've got where our gear is there we've got like another little step up with some tires over there and yes i checked them for crab sorry if they're your tires and you're watching there was none in them anyway um but yeah so i'm hoping that here's going to be a good little spot and i now know that when the water gets to my tripod i can walk 20 yards out in the water without falling off a cliff or a ledge um and casting maybe get it into a bit of deeper water as it stands i don't actually know what i've cast into whether i've cast onto this and it's only three inches deep out there or if i've cast and i've gone over a ledge and i've gone into a bit of a channel well, i have no idea um but we're we're out here giving it a go i put an eight ounce lid and it don't seem to be moving like not even not even tired run pool so i've got a feeling i'm only fishing in a couple of inches of water if that's the case that's the case this is all trial and error um and it's just good to be out with the, and I say with the lads. He, I mean, Wayne's made it out here and Wayne's blind and he's walked across this. What a legend. Over all them rocks. Look. You can see the, let's zoom in. See the rocks? Yeah, he's climbed down all them. Yeah, and come across all the, all the absolute horrible crap. Don't get me wrong. We've helped him a bit, but 90% of it, the man's done by himself. Anyway, uh, well, just me talking. Look, the tide is here. So we're going to have to move the rods back again in about the next... I don't know, two or three minutes. So hopefully we will see a fish tonight, guys. There's six of us here. We've got some of the best bait going. We've got to find something in a bit. Got to look at that for a view. Right, guys, we're up on the wall now. So I've, we put Joe and, uh, and Wayne and that all on the pier because it's just a lot easier, especially for Wayne, with not having to walk across this lot. Um, I've got one rod out that coming back in, we was literally, as soon as you've moved your rods back, put them down you could stand there and have a breather for a few seconds and then ah oh, pants the tides here it was rushing in honestly i could literally see the water filling up um so we've moved up here i've just put one rod out we're still waiting for the tide we got oh, i don't know it's quarter to seven i was at 10 to 10 so we've got about three hours till i water um which i'll fish till i water and then i'm done i think i don't know i might stay another hour but i've already been out now I've been up about, I don't know, 30 hours, 30 something hours, and I am aching everywhere. And the worst thing that aches are my eyes. My eyes are aching so bad. Um, anyway, so again, still using yellows, blacks, um, and I'm just going all out for codling now. I, I'm not, I don't care about anything else. I just want to get a codling to make this trip worth it because so far, I've it, spent an absolute bloody fortune, fuel, getting bait. I know I pump it, but it still obviously costs money to go and get it. Um, food and God knows what else. Um, and I've got one more in, uh, in 24 hours. And I've been to two of the best venues in the country. Um, all right, I did catch a few mackerel, but that doesn't really count, does it? Um, yeah. But hey-ho, everyone. That is fishing. We all know it happens. We all know it happens. Um, for me, my best trips are the ones that are spare at the moment. Anything you plan never goes to plan. Hate planning trips. Just like someone say, chisel tomorrow, weather looks good, let's go then. Or wherever it may be, you know? Um, I'm still optimistic. We've all got a fiver bet now. We've all chucked a fiver in for the biggest fish and half of the money will go for the biggest fish and half of the money will go to who guesses the weight of the biggest fish caught tonight. So my guess was £4.2. I'm being optimistic. Joe's gone in with about nine and a half pound. Um, so I said, that's fine, mate. I'll let him have my 15 quid and I'll just take... Obviously, it's going to be me that catches it. Obviously. Um, <laughs> I said, he can have my... I'll even give him my 15 quid if I get a nine and a half pounder. That's for sure. Because that will be my PB cod. And that'll be one that stays with me for a long time, definitely. It's like Blackpool Illuminations up there, look. So they've got all different lights set up so Wayne can see where he's where he, all of his stuff is. When I say see, he, he can see the light, but he, he's attracted to the He's like a fly, bless him. Attracted to the light. Well, anyway, tide's still quite a long way down there yet, as you can probably see. So uh, I will, uh, I'll bring you guys back for fish, hopefully. 
Well, thank Christ for that. T has pulled it out of the bag. His first ever codling. Happy days. Shall I chagrin? Yeah, look at him, look. Happy days. Give a lovely bite. Good slack liner. I even saw it go. I heard him get up and run and I see it bouncing. Thought we'd lost it. Fresh yellow towels on... Is that one of my rigs? Uh, yeah, so it's yeah. a 3 0 cut on that. Four, sorry, 4 0 cut hook. And a... Uh, a 5 0 octopus. Yeah, no. Buzzing with that. Well done, T. How'd you feel, mate? I'm buzzing, mate. Buzzing. Let's get some pictures. Lovely. Right, guys, we'll bring you back in a bit. Right, guys, I think Armin's got a now. Right, the, uh, the double nod pull down, slack line. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Oh, no! Oh, quick, quick movement, quick movement, quick movement. Keep moving. Keep bloody moving. Oh, it Diving absolutely every single bit of rock down there. Get up, get up, get up. Keep it coming, come on. Come on, it's nodding like a cod. Feels like a cod. Close to the Nodding like a cod. Come on, be a cod. Be a cod. I beg of you to be a cod. Don't be a conga. Oh, it's a cod, little. Yes! My cod's bigger than your cod. Shut up, you <laughs> bellend. What an absolute <laughs> arsehole. They're here, boys. They are here. Okay, T. Yours is bigger than mine. Uh, yellow. That was on. Bagnall by rig. The long that snood is. Um, I found a couple of these in a box that the Wester gave me with a load of sea glow bits in it. Um, just odds and sods where they didn't quite match up to fit in packs and things. So, yeah, but happy days. Only small, pound and a half maybe, but that is the target. 600 mile round trip and well, it'll be nearly 40 hours, I think, by the time we finish, time we actually get home. For that, yeah, and I know some of you think I'm mad, but that has made my trip, that little dude, for codlin for the season. Well, I'm gonna get this unhooked, it looks a bit, it looks deep hook, so um, it might not be pretty. Um, in a bit, guys. Well, what's happening, guys? So, I've just been up talking to Wayne and Joe, and I looked over my head torture and I see this rod was nodding away. Now, this is the bagging fire rig again. Um, I'm, I'm pretty certain there's a fish on it. Um, but it's taking me, I was reading in, I could feel it, it took me straight into a snag. I don't know if it's another cod or if it's a conga, but what I've done, let a load of line out slack, tide is now shifting, so I'm hoping the tide with the fish is going to pull me out of the snag, so here we go. Oh, I think I'm still snagged. Pretty certain I'm still snagged. That is poo. No, oh, there it goes, there it goes. I had it moving, got it moving. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's the fish still there, that is the thing. No, it's not. That is the problem with the channel. You can't you can't slow down and fight your fish. So I'm straight back in a snag again. As soon as you slow down and stop reeling. Come on. I'm not doing that. Let a bit more line out, let it go slack. Hopefully the tide will put it out for me. And if not the tide, if there was a fish still on there, which I don't think there is now, it will keep you there. Look, see that's tightening up the surf. I'll let a more slack out, see the tip come up. And then look, it just tightens back up itself. And that's pulling me. Get out, you arse. <coughs> really annoying because it's there, so close. This is going to go 
cooking in a minute. I'm giving it too much. All we can do now is walk back with it. Which I hate doing because I'm going to lose it. Oh no, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Like I say, whatever fish was on there, I'm pretty certain it's gone. Straight back in a bloody snag. What is going on? Come on, get out. Got it moving again. There's the leader. No, there's no fish here. There's no fish there. But I'm pretty certain somewhere along the line there was. That was a, a good bait, a good sized bait, yeah. Look, both the kennels have been pulled down. <coughs> Plenty of weed. And wrecked my worm. Right, we've got one last cast, I think, and then we're off. We'll uh, see you guys in a bit. Right guys, we're on our last truck. We've probably got a couple of minutes left because uh, I've had enough. We could probably stay for another half hour or so, but I need my bed now. Um, yeah, the tide run here is absolutely epic. So that, that rod there, that red rod, the red tip rod, it's not really picking it up on my phone, but it's bouncing just up like this, up and down, up and down, up and down. That's got a seven ounce gripper on it, and it's just going down tide, down tide, down tide, down tide. Um, the other rod has only got a six ounce on it, but I didn't cast it as far. I chucked one in a bit closer just in case. Um, and I thought it'd keep it out of the tide run a bit. Although it's starting to move a bit now. Yeah, look, there it goes. Um, listen, guys, if you've watched both videos, because obviously today I was at Chesil, last night I was at Chesil, um, I'd love to thank you very much for that. Um, again, a big shout out to Ken, because I know you're still sitting in the caravan, Ken, watching this one. Um, my card, mate, I'm dedicating to you. And T's cod can go to Darren. Because without yours, without them yellow towels that you pumped us, we wouldn't have had the fish. Amazing bait. Pair of gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, and obviously all the subscribers. Um, yes, the support was amazing. If you haven't subscribed, I know there haven't been the greatest videos. But that's fishing. We shall see you guys on the next one. Thank you.